Hi everyone, welcome back to Five Quote Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, Act 1. Today we are working on Act 1, Scene 3. In this series, I provide a quick overview of the events of each scene, and then I dig into the text and pull out five quotes that I think are really useful to help you get to the core meaning of each scene by analyzing character and theme. The scene changes now to the interior of the Capulet house, and Lady Capulet announces that it is time for Juliet to consider marriage. She sells County Paris as a good catch, and we've just seen County Paris in the last scene. The nurse is excited and tells a charming, rambling, slightly rough-and-ready anecdote of Juliet as a young child. This is her introduction to the nurse, and she's a charming character, and this is one of the great scenes of all of literature, so stay tuned. Lady Capulet tells Juliet to observe Paris, uh, Paris at a party and decide if she can love him, and Juliet's answer is very revealing. It's, our first time, it's the first time we get a look at Juliet as a character, and she comes off as being quite clever. She answers that she hasn't considered marriage, but she will check Paris out. She will look no deeper than her mother allows, which is actually a smart equivocation, which we'll talk about now. The first important quote is this one by Lady Capulet, and it's important because it reveals a lot about her character, but also about Juliet's circumstances, because what kind of mother you have reveals a lot about the kind of upbringing that you've had and some of the, the uh, advantages and disadvantages. So uh, the nurse and Lady Capulet call in Juliet for the big news. And this is what Lady Capulet says. This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. If you analyze the language here, you realize how cold, emotionally distant the mother is. She announces the big news of, wow, you know, my daughter might be getting married. And hey, daughter, you, you're looking forward to getting married. She announces this with this kind of language. This is the matter. It's, uh, it's more suitable to a boardroom of you know, stock investors or something like that, not to an intimate conversation between a mother and a daughter. Very revealing, quite early in the play, Shakespeare wants us to know what Juliet is dealing with. It helps explain why Juliet is so eager to leave, doesn't it? Um, this is interesting too. Nurse, give us leave a while. The, the mother, she's this aristocratic lady, and she believes that uh, you know she has this duty to talk to her daughter about this very serious matter, and these peasant nurses shouldn't have anything to do with it. But as soon as they're alone, or as soon as she fears that they're going to be alone, as soon as we see the nurse, you know, moving out the door, the mother starts to panic because the mother has no idea how to talk to her her daughter at all. So again, it, it's it's heartbreakingly cold. Really, it's a heartbreakingly cold and, and, and emotionally distant relationship. Um, both movies, both of the famous movies, the 1968 and the uh, 1990s one, uh, they, they do a decent job of showing that coldness. Watch either one of those. Um, the 1990s one is, is, a bit, um, is a bit different. Okay. In sharp contrast to that coldness, the, the very next moment we see, we see evidence of a very tender and warm relationship between the nurse and Juliet. Now remember the nurse, uh, she was a wet nurse. Uh, aristocratic ladies would not breastfeed on their own. They would hire that out to a wet nurse. And essentially the nurse becomes the surrogate uh, mother for the, ch for the baby. And indeed we learn that the nurse actually lost her own baby. And so Juliet is really a surrogate uh, child for her. Uh, so she's basically a professional mother is what she is. So they start thinking about Juliet's age because it's time to get married. And then they start reminiscing or Ju the nurse starts reminiscing about when Juliet was a baby. And she remembers fondly the moment uh, that she tried to wean Juliet from her breast so that she could stop breastfeeding as, a, as, an, older, as an older baby, as an older you know, child. And, and it, it's, it's, it's funny and it's charming. And if you get a good actor you know, doing this is just, it's, it's one of the great scenes in all of literature. They move from that uh, when Juliet was trying to be, you know, weaned from the breast, which is cute and funny and warm and tender, very, very intimate in stark contrast to the relationship with the biological mother. Um, then they move on to this joke of, we learn that uh, uh, the nurse's husband is, is, has passed away, God be with his soul. And but the nurse remembers this this joke when Juliet fell down and bumped her head and the husband said something funny, which has a little bit of innuendo in there. So it's it's cute and earthy and ribald and everything else. Uh, she goes on and on and on. Look how long it is. I, I, it was very hard for me to pick a single quote to capture everything that I'm trying to convey to you here, which can't be conveyed to me to, to you here. Uh, find a good actor to do it for you. 
So I decided to choose this one, this very last one. After that long-winded, very emotional uh, uh, um, reminiscence, the nurse says, Thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. If I might live to see thee married once, I have my wish. So it, it's that, that captures a lot of it. Uh, the nurse's warmth, she's loving, she's quite simple. For her, life is all about babies. And how do you make babies? By getting married. So the big moments in life are marriage, childbirth, marriage, childbirth. That's how she understands life. And so it's, it, she, she's a very, very real character. Shakespeare nailed her perfectly. Um, it's also the theme, of course, love as nurturing, which is what it should be. It's another view of love, love as the, as the mother-child nurturing, um, in its mother-child nurturing component. Yeah, lovely. So the mother is very happy to have the subject come around to marriage again, and she asks her daughter, how stands your disposition to be married? We could actually use that as, as another great quote to uh, indicate how cold the, the mother is. And not only that, but I forgot to mention uh, the business, it's, it's the big theme of uh, uh, love as a business arrangement. That's, that's another one of Shakespeare's um, th notions of love that is being expressed in this play. Um, now, Juliet's answer is quite revealing. She says, it is an honor that I dream not of. And the reason why that's clever is because it's equivocating. Equivocating is a way to speak uh, whereby you give an answer that seems to be an answer, but it's not really an answer. You don't know what your... You don't know what the questioner is looking for. You don't really know how much you should reveal or how much you want to reveal. So you you you, you answer in a very guarded way. Now, equivocation can be a, a quite a dishonest thing because it's half lying. In a situation like this, I don't know. The, the, Juliet was, you know, she knows her mother. She knows how much they don't get. They don't know each other, and so how much information would you give to a business partner? That's what they basically are, that you don't necessarily trust. So she's clever. She's, she's young, and she's, but at the same time, she's quite guarded. I think, she, I think this reveals that she's quite smart because in other places in the play, as I said before, as a kind of motif, we, you, don't, you don't take one piece of evidence as evidence that this is so. You, use, you, you do a clustering kind of thing. You find one piece of evidence to suggest that Juliet's clever, find it again and find it again, put them all together, and you've got solid evidence for your essay or for your argument uh, that Juliet is indeed clever. So we do see, we do th see the same kind of behavior later, uh, two more times uh, to be precise that I can think of. You might be able to find more. The other option is that maybe she's just young and maybe she really hasn't thought about getting married. Um, I don't know if that, that could be true. Uh, but she's 13 years old, and I think 13-year-old girls start to think of, of boys anyway, you know, if, if the K-pop craze is anything to, to go by. Um, so I think that's more, it reveals her clever guardedness than simply, no, a marriage, well, you know, what is that? I, I don't think that she's just young and naive. So the mother goes right into her long sales pitch, uh, promoting the valiant Paris as a good uh, catch. It's worth noting here, by the way, that the nurse actually agrees with the mother. Uh, he's he's such a man. Remember, the nurse has a very limited understanding of 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 what life is all about. She lost her husband. She lost her baby. She's lowborn. She has to make her own way in the world. So she's a very practical minded person. And if you're going to marry anybody, you marry a man of wax. He's the perfect molded man. So he's probably good looking. Um, got lots of money, got lots of power and influence. So the nurse thinks that he's a good catch. Um, we don't fault her for not understanding the importance of romance and true love versus a marriage of practical convenience. But um, but there it is. Uh, Lady Capulet goes on this long, long sales uh, uh, pitch that's much, much, much more sophisticated in terms of language and organization of thought than the nurse's rambling that we saw up here. Okay, she, she uses metaphors, she, she speaks with uh, rhyme and end rhyme, glory and story. Shakespeare reserves that for the aristocrats. Her argument is that uh, uh, Paris is a book who, in need of a gorgeous cover to make him, to, to, to finish him off and to provide the beauty exterior. That, that was the notion of, of love back in those days. And she ends with, so shall you share all that he doth possess by having him, making yourself no less. So that's, you know, 
that's that's the pitch to get married. Now the nurse grabs onto that no no less nay bigger women grow men by women grow by men. So here again here I, I, this is more evidence of kind of the same thing I already showed you. Uh, the nurse as as a, a simple understanding of life. Uh, making babies. That's what marriage is for, and that's what women are for, making babies. She's very earthy. She's very rough. There's a, a bit of, you know, sexual innuendo here. Uh, she's very practical, as we've just seen. She, You can think of her as the nurse as a personification of the hearth. The hearth is the home fire. It's the place where, from which life emanates within the home. Without a hearth, there's no home. Uh, we don't quite have hearths anymore, but we have kitchens. It's the kitchen. It's where all the warmth is and all the nourishment is, and that's that's what the that's what that's what the nurse is. Uh, so this this is this is a really cute joke that again reveals something else about the nurse. If you need two quotes, there you go. Uh, now again, this is more. We've already talked about this, but this is even maybe a better quote than the previous one. And again, it's part of that cluster. It helps prove that Juliet is indeed being equivocating and actually quite guarded and clever. Again, listen to the tone. Speak briefly. Can you like of Paris's love? There's the business. Just sign the contract. I'll look to like if looking liking move, but no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Now, this is a really weird sentence here. I'll look to like if looking like. I'll look to see if I can like him if by looking liking can be moved i can be moved to like the guy i can be moved emotionally to like the guy so she says okay fine i'll go have a look if if indeed just by looking at him i can be moved um maybe that's part of the 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 love is infatuation theme too because you know uh, indeed later on she is moved by the look only of romeo and and romeo of of her looks now here's here's where the real equivocation comes. She says, "I'll look more. I, I won't look any deeper than you than you, dear mother, give me consent to to uh, to make it fly." So she's seeming to agree as much as she possibly can to the mother's request. She's not saying yes. She's not saying no. She's saying, "Okay, well, if you're making me do this, then I'll have a look." And 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 but she says nothing. It's it's a clever answer because she's she's she seems to be saying something, but she's not really saying much at all. The servant then comes in in a huff, saying, "The guests have arrived. We need you to get the party rolling." And the nurse says, "Go, Juliet. Seek happy nights to happy days." She's all excited about her impending wedding. Okay, that's the end of Act One, Scene Three. Come back for the next video uh, where we will look at Scene Four. This is back to the boys. The boys are outside. They're in high spirits and they're ready to crash the cabinet party. Thanks for watching.